Hey there, Mrs. Banky here, ready to talk to you um, about the nomenclature of chemical compounds, part two. And today I'm going to focus on ternary ionic compounds. I have a special visitor here with me today, my armadillo. Uh, hopefully he won't make too much noise and be disruptive, but he's going to be keeping me company as I make this today. So, a little bit of review. In a previous installment, I talked about binary ionic compounds, which contain two elements. And the first element is a metal, the second element is a nonmetal. And the names are pretty simple just the name of the metal followed by the name of the nonmetal, ending in IDE. Ternary ionic compounds are a little bit more complicated, but hopefully, I I'm hoping that you realize that they're nearly as simple. Um, a little later in a future installment, we will talk about binary molecular compounds, which contain nonmetals, um, acids, and then if you take advanced chemistry, we focus heavily on organic compounds, which are really neat. So, a little bit of a review um, with polyatomic ions. Ternary ionic compounds will contain at least one polyatomic ion. And if you're looking at the formula, you can see that you will see three or more elements. Sulfate, SO4, is a group of elements that sticks together and carries a negative two charge. Um, a polyatomic ion is usually the second part of the compound. There is one exception, and that is ammonium, NH4, with a plus one charge, is one that we commonly see at the front of a ternary ionic compound. The only common polyatomic ions we see that end in IDE are hydroxide, cyanide, and peroxide. There are some other ones, ferrocyanide is another one, um, but typically if, a, if you're looking at the name of a compound and it ends in IDE, it's most likely going to be binary ionic. Some examples of ternary ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions that you may be familiar with or at least can relate to um, include these compounds that I have right here. In the palm of this hand, you see some ammonium nitrate. And ammonium nitrate is uh, frequently used as a fertilizer. It's very rich in nitrogen, since ammonium has NH4 um, and nitrate is NO3, so a really good source of nitrogen, which, help, which helps plants grow. Unfortunately, um, ammonium nitrate has also been used in some historic uh, very tragic events like the um, Oklahoma City bombings and also many of the terrorist bombings in other countries. So where many compounds are helpful to us, unfortunately, there are some pitfalls and people use things in really bad ways. Calcium sulfate is also known as gypsum. You can see these beautiful crystals here. Um, it's a relatively soft mineral. Um, one thing about gypsum is that um, it's considered a hydrate and um, water molecules naturally get tied up in the crystal structure um, upon formation. Uh, this is used in making gypsum board, um, also drywall in homes. And the drywall is designed um, with the gypsum in it uh, for a very specific purpose. It um, is a very good fire um, spreading prevention substance in that when these crystals that contain so much water uh, begin to heat up, they um, absorb, the water absorbs all of the heat and um, kind of keeps the heat from building up even more and, and dissipating further. So um, drywall is a fire protective measure um, in homes. 
Um, magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salts, uh, may look familiar to you. If you've ever had very sore feet or sore muscles, it's um, often um, suggested that you put them in a, a bath and, and soak soak your feet into some Epsom salts that have been dissolved in warm water or take a bath with them. Um, it is known to uh, soothe muscles. Magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts also is a very good source of magnesium and sulfur for garden plants if there are deficiencies. I use those myself this summer to grow some wonderful broccoli and cauliflower plants, which I'm beginning to harvest now. Yeah, I know. I know they were good. Yep. Okay, I got to get back to this now. All right. So when we're naming ternary ionic compounds, we use the same process as with binary ionic compounds. We just name the cation first, and we name the anion second. An example of a substance that is used in electronics oftentimes as an etching sort of compound is iron 3 nitrate. Um, iron 3 chloride is also used um, as a solid exists as an orangish powder. Um, when dissolved in water, it makes an orangish solution. So the iron 3 is iron with an Fe with a plus 3 charge. Nitrate, the name is iron 3 nitrate. Remember that if a substance can have more than one charge, we have to indicate that in the name. When we're writing formulas, we use the same method we used with binary molecular compounds, and that's using the crossover rule. So um, we start with writing the ion charges first, aluminum with plus three charge, sulfate. Um, I like to put polyatomic ions in parentheses or actually physically circle them. Um, as a reminder that this is a group of elements that stays together and it carries the charge. So when we're using the crossover rule, the charge is telling us, uh, the negative two is telling us how many aluminums we need. And the plus three here, the three is telling us how many sulfates we need. So again, crossing over those charges um, here indicating that we have three sulfate groups and again, parentheses used for that. The name is simply aluminum sulfate. Now, one thing that is going to become very important for us throughout the course of the year is being able to count atoms of each element. So an introduction to that, I will show you here. There are two aluminums. And if I were to get rid of that three and just look at the SO4 here, there would be one sulfur and four oxygens with the little three outside the parentheses that multiplies through. So that gives us three sulfurs and 12 oxygens. Here are some more examples. I'm going to get my pen here. Um, ammonium is one of the, on the only common polyatomic ions that, I wonder why it's not writing. Oh, there it is. Ammonium is one of the only common polyatomic ions that, oh, this pen's out of control. Sorry about that, folks. Um, has two elements, a nitrogen and hydrogen, carries a plus one charge. Chromate, again, parentheses, circle, anything to remind us that this is a unit that stays together. Now, since chromate has a negative two charge, it tells us that we need two ammoniums. Since we need two polyatomic ions, we put that in parentheses. And we need one chromate. Now, some people are more comfortable putting that chromate in parentheses, even though you need one. And I'm OK with that, but you probably won't see me um, doing that so much. This is a sodium ion. This combination of elements here is called a citrate ion, C6H507, and it carries a negative three charge. Again, 
a group of elements that carries that charge. Because it has a negative 3, it tells us we need 3 sodiums. And this group here, we just have one of, and it um, just gets written as it is. Sodium citrate is commonly used as a preservative in many substances. Um, in hospitals, sometimes used as a laxative, which is kind of an unpleasant. Yeah, sometimes I have to talk about these things. Sometimes is an unpleasant thing to talk about, but if you're going to be in a lung surgery, sometimes they give you what they need to to make sure you're cleaned out um, so you don't have any accidents on the bed. They also put this in coffee creamers, um, the kind that is the half and half that needs no refrigeration. And I may happen to know somebody who had discovered this the hard way upon grading papers on a Saturday morning, commonly drinking lots of coffee, and eventually needing to end up in the bathroom, discovered that that citrate, citrate um, component of sodium citrate kind of acts as a laxative, and this person tried everything to figure out what in that restaurant was making them sick and discovered sodium citrate in the coffee creamers was the culprit. Something kind of interesting, uh, speaking of sodium citrate, there's an article here. Uh, sodium citrate will turn a block of cheese into the creamiest nacho sauce ever. Get some. So if you're interested in making some creamy nacho sauce and not too worried about the laxative effects that sodium citrate may embark on you, uh, you might want to try this. I wouldn't mind getting me some creamy nacho sauce, but I don't know if I'm willing to risk this, knowing that I might share it with my friend who has an aversion to a lot of sodium citrate. Um, just like the... <laughs> Just like the binary ionic compounds um, simplified, um, I have some um, lead four. Oh, whoops, a daisy. Let me go back. I have to activate my pen. Um, lead four, lead with a plus four charge, um, and sulfite is SO3. Um, this may be good, a good time before I get any further with this, is to talk about that sulfite-sulfate relationship. So in a previous example, we had sulfate, which is SO4, with a negative 2 charge. And sulfite is SO3 with a negative 2 charge. With There's a, a relationship in polyatomic ions that have oxygen in them. If they have the 8 endings, it indicates that it is the polyatomic ion with um, the higher number of oxygens or one more oxygen than the ite, which is sulfate, has one more oxygen than sulfite. Um, nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. Nitrite is NO2 with a minus one charge. Again, nitrate having one more oxygen than nitrite. So if I go back here to the um, lead sulfite and use the crossover rule, the four would come down there. I need three sulfite groups, the two there. Since these are both divisible by two, I would have to simplify it to PbSO3. Too, like that. And the name is lead 4 sulfite. Even though if you were looking strictly at the formula alone and strategically trying to work backwards to get to what the charge is on that, you have to keep in mind and double check sulfite has a negative 2 charge. If there are two of them, there's no choice but for the lead to be plus 4. 
Now, when you're looking at um, a formula, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming because there are so many more atoms and numbers and letters. And, and I just want to remind you that ionic compounds always have two parts. The first part is almost always a metal or hydrogen. And ammonium is the exception. Whoops, I forgot to activate my pen again. There we go. So ammonium is the, the, except, the exception. So again, you just have to break it into the two parts and identify the ions. On the next page, there's going to be a list. Here it is, a list of um, formulas. And again, can seem kind of scary at first. Now, if you remember that the first part is usually an element, or like an, a metal or hydrogen, a good approach would be just to go ahead and, and identify the first element. This is ammonium, so I know that that's going to be my first part. Aluminum, hydrogen, sodium, sodium. All right? If that's the first part, then the rest of it is the second part. NO3 the OH, the OH, the ClO4. Notice these are not in a parentheses, it's just everything else. And then if there is a parentheses with a number added, we're just looking at the combination of letters and numbers inside the parentheses, okay? So here we have hydrogen. Now if we look on our polyatomic ion chart, which is on our cheat sheet, and I cruise down to see, oh, there I see, NO3 nitrate, the name of this is going to be hydrogen nitrate. Here I know that NH4 is ammonium, looking for OH and finding OH right here beneath the nitrate. So that is called hydroxide, aluminum, oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about ammonium, ammonium hydroxide. Here we have hydroxide again, aluminum hydroxide. Hydrogen is our first element here. First part, simply named hydrogen. Chlorate, if we look on our list, oh, I made a mistake. And sometimes I make mistakes with polyatomic ions because there are a lot of them to remember. And I have to think really, really hard. I wasn't thinking too hard and I just spouted off chlorate and it's easy to make mistakes. And that's why I allow you to rely on the um, cheat sheet, the polyatomic ion charts. Eventually you're just going to memorize many of them from usage alone. So the name of this is hydrogen perchlorate. C2H, C2H3O2 um, happens to be acetate. So the name of this is sodium acetate. Um, SO4. Um, SO4 is uh, as we just talked about, sulfate. So the no name of this is sodium sulfate. Again, there's always two parts. Figuring out what the first part is, what the second part is. Um, usually the first part is just an element, either a metal or hydrogen, unless we have this group of elements here, this specific group of elements right here um, that is ammonium. So that is the end of my presentation on ternary ionic compounds. Um, the best thing that a person can do is just practice, practice, practice. Um, I know sometimes it can get very tedious. You don't have to remind me, but that's how we're going to get better, right? Good. Thank you for watching. My next installment will be on binary molecular compounds, which have a whole different naming system, but it's pretty easy to figure out. You're going to get a lot better at this as the year goes along. If you need extra help, always feel free to ask. And that is my show for the night. It is night. You wouldn't have known it was night, but it happens to be night. Even if you might be watching this in the morning, which might seem weird, but for me, it's night. So, good night.
um, the drywall in your house is made out of gypsum board and um, often times Hear that? Sorry. You want to keep banging on the door. Make it. Go. Do you seriously have to take your clothes off right now? Why are you putting on a tank top? It's after school. Don't be knocking on my door again. Well, I need things. Well, I do homework for a little bit. Not in here. But I don't have homework, so. You do have homework. I could do um, chemistry. Yeah. Oh, chemistry. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, hurry up. I need my BD too, Mom. I'm locking the door behind you. Don't you dare come. Come on, banging. Don't do I don't it. I need anything else. Seriously, can you believe that? So rude. Sorry about that interruption. I'm going to start over at the beginning of this slide. Some examples of compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Oh, I can't even do that because I don't have my earphones on. Jeez Louise. Make sure I put them on right. Oh. Okay, here I go. Some common examples of compounds that contain polyatomic ion, um, ions. Oh, God. This is ridiculous. All right, try it again. <laughs> what I was going to even say about these compounds. It's been a week since I even made the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> okay. Yes, I am sitting here laughing by myself. Hopefully I don't get interrupted again. So, um, <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> 